Hey everybody, here is my Linksys WRT 54G wireless G router sitting here on top of the Black Max, and under it I have a D-Link gigabit switch model DGS-2208. Anyways, I'm gonna be talking about the router in this video. Okay, I've had this router for nearly five years. I got it in the summer of 2006 back in the day I had just brought home my cube computer one or plexi that I built in high school I had brought it home for the summer of 2006 and I wanted to be able to use it in my bedroom and of course my parents had, had their e-machine back then and we needed to share a connection so it, I was new to networking and that kind of stuff so I had picked up a Belkin router but it was such a pain I always had so many problems out of it, so I just boxed it up and we went back to Walmart and got us this router. It was kind of pricey back then. I can't remember how much it cost, but it wasn't really cheap. But um, for the most part, this router has done pretty well. And when I first got it, I was having some issues getting it to accept the internet connection. And I was having issues with, you know, just connecting to the router overall with the password and that sort of stuff. Like the default password wasn't the default. So I got a hold of Lynx's support and they got that figured out. They, what they did was they sent me a firmware upgrade for it and I upgraded the firmware. And it has had that same firmware. I'm not exactly sure what version it is, but anyways, this is a version 6 one router. And it has, I think it has Broadcom chips in it, if I'm not mistaken, but what I've read online. And I mean, for the most part, the router has worked pretty well. But over its course of life I have had some issues with it to just every once in a while I would just randomly disconnect the internet and I'd have to hit the reset button on the back of the router I mean it just happened every once in a while but here recently over the past month or so it's been it's been doing it very very often it would do it when I would like do bandwidth intensive intensive stuff such as Google Earth for let's say for example Google Earth 6 the new version of the Google Earth that came out recently the new street view, all that sort of stuff. It's a bandwidth hog. And I would get on Google or Street View and I would have issues with the imagery not being able to load. And I would go into Firefox and try to re refresh a page and it would say looking up such and such dot com. So evidently I, I, I mean I'd had to come in here and reset this router twice or three times within a fifteen minute period. I mean this bandwidth intensive stuff would just cause it to refuse a connection. Not to mention one time I was on the phone with somebody. I was on the, on the, I was on the phone with a doctor and this router decided to disconnect the internet and I lost the phone call. And I was in the phone tree too. I was not happy. But anyways, recently this thing has been acting up. I would have to reset it and reset it and reset it and reset it. My parents had to reset it and reset it. It was getting really annoying. So tonight I finally decided to make a firmware upgrade to it. I upgraded to a firmware called DD-WRT and I mean I've known about this for a while I mean like a year ago I was just searching on YouTube just looking at stuff on YouTube and I came across this and they're talking about this firmware for Linksys routers and how it could you know you could install it and be able to customize your router to do all sorts of stuff such as be like an access point or actually receive an internet connection over you know the Wi-Fi rather than distributing I mean, you could do a whole bunch of stuff with this firmware. But, I mean, back then I didn't really care much for it. I didn't want to go through the trouble of upgrading it. But, recently I've been having this trouble with the router, so I decided to finally apply it. And I have to say, not only is this firmware highly customizable, it really brings the true performance out of this router. Like I said before, I upgraded the firmware in Google Earth 6. This thing will just continuously refuse a connection, I had to come in and reset it over and over again but after I applied this firmware it works very well I haven't had to reset it yet I mean it, it works very very well and I'm not exactly all that familiar with the DD-WRT firmware just yet I'm still new to it I mean it's it's so customizable I mean you, you just wouldn't be able to believe it I mean you com when you compare this to the original firmware that comes on these routers it is a night and day difference. Okay, here's a look at the firmware again. 
I mean, right now I'm in wireless settings, advanced settings. You can go through basic settings, such as all this, radius, wireless security, Mac filter, advanced settings, and all sorts of stuff. I mean, there's so many tabs. There's so many things you can do with this firmware. It's, it's crazy. Not to mention it tells you some good information. This, when you just glance at it, it tells you uptime. Tells your load average, tells your WAN IP, more or less your ISP's IP. Tells you the version of firmware it is, which is DD-WRT version 24 of Service Pack 2. I mean, this is you just wouldn't believe all the features that are in this firmware. Here is the website, which explains how to flash. And if you're not really familiar with doing this kind of stuff, I highly recommend that you don't do it until you are familiar with it because there are several steps and it is kind of time consuming. What you got to do is you download the package for a particular router. I download the one that's for version 5 and version 6. You got to do a hard reset on the router, which you more like you got to hold the button in for 30 seconds in, remove power for 30 seconds and plug it back in while holding the reset button for 30 seconds. Then you have to set a static IP on your computer to 192.168.1.7 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and they didn't really explain that well how to do this let me go ahead and just add on here in Windows Vista and Windows 7 what I did was I disabled this and then went into the properties of this, of this and then entered the IP address information here and that made things work like it was supposed to. But anyways, you gotta set the static IP to your computer, and then you gotta disconnect everything else from your router except for your computer and your internet connection. <clears throat> so I dis uh, disconnected all the other computers and made sure my netbook was turned off so I didn't have any wireless connections in here. And you unzip the file, and then you back up the firmware that's on the machine. You enter your MAC address, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's time consuming and it, you, just, you gotta follow these instructions. And you gotta power cycle the router, the router several times. I mean, it's, it's pretty time consuming. But if you're willing to get the most out of your router, it's highly worth it. I'm not kidding you, it's highly worth it. So anyways, if you have a Linksys router, a WRT54G router that's acting up on you, you might want to consider upgrading it to the DD-WRT firmware. Anyways, like I say, you go to their website and you pick out the firmware that's for your router, and you follow the instructions I just went through. I didn't, I mean, I just went through them briefly. I didn't go through every single detail because there's a lot to it. Anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask.